Hey guys, this is Trenchy here again to bring you another video in the dark. <laughs> it's a shout out uh, to a friend of ours. Uh, they they will get the uh, in the reference in the dark, in the dark. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, today I am here to review. An adaptation of Sleepy Hollow. Um, I like the the story of Sleepy Hollow. Um, it's a classic uh, folk tale. You know, um, I think it'd be considered a folk tale legend. You know, uh, the the headless horseman. Um, this dude got his head fucking knocked off in war by a cannonball, and he ends up haunting the town, and people that, uh, dare to ride the Sleepy Hollow roads that night, uh, will be haunted, and, um, attacked by the Headless Horseman. And, um, yeah, that's essentially the story. Who is seeking his head? Um, well, there, there's more to it than that. The, the, this story, the Headless Horseman plays a part, but in the original legend, it is about, mainly about a person who ran into the Headless Horseman and stuff like that. Uh, this adaptation's from the 90s. I don't know if it's 99 or 1990. No, two very drastically different dates. But I'm not sure it is. It is a 90s uh, movie, though. And, um, I really enjoyed this adaptation. I know, like, when you talk in, uh... Headless Horseman, Sleepy Hollow adaptations. The ones that mainly come up is the Disney movie. Um, which is a good little animated movie. Really well done. And you have the uh, Tim Burton version with Johnny Depp and Christopher Walken as the Headless Horseman. And that's a good one too. That's a really enjoyable ride. You got Christina Ricci in there as well. Um, that's an enjoyable film. Gotta love Burton, man. Burton bringing his A-game there. But, um, I really enjoyed this one. This, uh, was a very just, it felt like a legend. Um, and the way it starts, it almost starts almost like an anthology film. It starts like, um, Maybe late 1800s, I think. No, no cars, no technology, you know. People are still riding horses and stuff. And, uh, this guy comes into this inn. And there's a, there's, it's late at night. I think it's also storming, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't, maybe it's not, maybe it's just late, I'm not sure. But, um, he comes into the inn and there's a bunch of old men chilling. Uh, drinking their ale and stuff and shooting the shit. You got another person drawing in the corner. He's drawing a picture. And the, the, the dude that comes in pulls out this book and is like, I am collecting stories. So these, these old men start going into all these stories. And, um... The, the 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 guy that's writing the book walks up to the dude drawing the picture and he's like hey do you have a story for me like well he's like hey I would like to uh, see what you're drawing and the drawing is of Ichabod Crane the main character of the Sleepy Hollow story and then we the the old men start telling it and we kind of flow into that and I really like that aspect and you can hear them throughout the movie. They don't cut, they cut back to them at least two, maybe three times. Um, they cut back to them a bit. And I enjoy that. I really like, um, 
the 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 legend telling in the movie. I I really like it when people in movies tell legends. You know, they're just uh, they don't you don't even have to show it just. Show this dude telling a story, which they do that quite a few times in this film. When the legend of the Headless Horseman, or when the story of the Headless Horseman is being told, uh, um, by either characters in the tale itself, or, um, the characters telling the tale in the end, it's really, um, I really enjoy those moments. There's a great one. Where this woman's getting into how the uh, headless horseman lost his head, and they don't they don't show the headless horseman lose they don't show him losing his head they don't put any clips there they just show this woman telling the story, and it's really good. More movies should do that where it's just this person telling a legend. They don't need to show us the legend all the time. If the if the person's a good storyteller and can really get into it and and a good actor, then that can be just as compelling as, you know, the narration over the story being shown on screen. And I know they say show, don't tell, but, like, sometimes telling can be really well done and even more interesting than showing. But, um... So... Yeah, uh, we get into the main story, and we have Ichabod Crane, who looks like the actor that got looks precisely out of the cartoon, and um, he pretty much got that down, and he's really funny. Uh, they do show that he's not really the best character, like, he has, he's very greedy and out for himself, but... The thing is, he's so fucking funny with his facial expressions and his movements and the way he talks. Like, the actor brings a life to this character that is very uh, comedic, which I enjoy. I enjoy the uh, comedic aspects of Ichabod. Um, another thing I like about this tale... Is they they humanize Brom, you know Brom Bones, the uh, the antagonist of the first movie, of the of the legend. Even though we, Ichabod's never really shown as a good guy either, but except for the uh, Tim Burton movie, but um, Brom's in this is just, you know he he loves Katrina. He does. Well, Ichabod just wants. Just is like, oh, she's pretty, and her parents are rich. Like, he literally went through their fucking fancy spoons. <laughs> well, they're not looking, he's just going through their fancy spoons and shit. Um, fucking dickwad, but, uh, <laughs> um, no, 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 but, uh, no, no, no. Um, but Brom, uh, genuinely loves Katrina. The only problem is Katrina is the only heir of her parents and she wants to keep the farm alive, carry on the family legacy and stuff. Like she wants to keep it alive because she is the only heir so she wants to stay back and work on the farm but also travel the world and see stuff but always come back. She doesn't want to wanna leave permanently. Well... Um, Brom, he doesn't want to inherit his fortune. He wants to go out and make his own. And he wants to take Katrina, uh, with him. And, um, which is very noble. Like, he, he is kind of a dick. He pulls pranks and stuff. But in the end of the day... He's, he's a decent person. Like, he's not a villain. Just like, just like I wouldn't say Ichabod's a villain either. He's just kind of dicky. Um, but yeah, like, the, the, the thing I really liked about this movie is the characters are all likable. The, the characters telling the story in the end 
the old men are likable. Um, fucking Ichabod, very fun to watch. Not a good character, but fun to watch and likable in the sense that he's just so awkward and stuff, you know. Um, Brahms, likable character. You can see why he's doing what he's doing. He's a little reckless and stuff, but in the end of the day, he has good intentions. Um, Katrina. Very likable character. Um, I do have some... I do think they written her really weird. Like, I do think there was some fucks-ups in the writing. Like, there are some things that don't make sense that her character does. And, um, maybe I'll get into the spoiler section. I don't know. It's just that... They started Katrina as this very uh, smart girl who's loyal to her family. She likes Brom, but she doesn't want to run away with him. And when she meets Ichabod, she's attracted to him because of how smart he is. And she wants to learn too, and she's smart. And he has traveled the world, he's very... Uh, knowledgeable of things around the world and she wants to see things travel the world so she is attracted to that and um but then there is a there's a moment where she find like Ichabod essentially she finds out Ichabod's essentially been lying to her um, for her wealth and um, she still invites him to a dance she still invites him to this little event um, she Then dances with him to make Brom jealous. Like, she overly tortures Brom in this moment. Which I don't get because she's not... She doesn't hate Brom. She gets... She even says later she gets that Brom genuinely likes her. Why is she still torturing Brom? What? I And... Why is she, like, doing this to... She never seemed really vindictive. Katrina, yes, yeah, she was upset, but she, like, leads Ichabod on only to, uh, leave him. And then only does be like, yeah, you fucked up a life. But, like, I don't know, it's just weirdly written that she would still torture Bron by dancing with Ichabod after that. It's a really weirdly written sequence. Uh, it's just, I don't know. There's something about that that didn't sit right with me. I'm like, that doesn't fit the character you built. But uh, that is that is one nitpick. I did enjoy this film. Um, The backgrounds are great. Sometimes they look a little off, but a lot of the series great and a lot of like... When the Headless Horseman comes around, the colors they use are great and uneerie and unnerving. Um, I especially like when the, the true Headless Horseman is shown. Uh, a low budget, of course, but they, I like the effect they did with it anyways. It's very uh, um, creepy. And I like that. Um... This movie's a slow burn, uh, for sure. But what makes it makes it good is the characters. The characters are great. Even characters like Katrina's dad, um, Katrina's dad, Katrina's mom, um, 
is fucking great. Uh, the guy that owns the, the superintendent of the schoolhouse is great. He's so fucking funny. Um, and there's a lot of nice hats in this movie. Um, but the, the characters are so good. And just the vibe, the, the, the legend, this movie does feel like you are watching a legend. Like, if someone was to tell you this legend in spoken form, this is the, and you could see their thoughts, like, projected on a projector of what they were telling you, this is what you would see. And, um, I like that. I didn't try to go big or anything, it was just a simple telling of the tale with really good and really good actors that fit their roles and uh a couple nitpicks here and there but you know i enjoyed this a lot um so if you're a you're um a sleepy hollow fan Check out this Legend of Sleepy Hollow from, I'll put the uh, year in the uh, title, so you'll know exactly what year, but it's a 90s uh, movie. Um, and again, to alliterate, the, the fucking scenes where they're just telling the legend in these movies are, are great. Especially in this movie are great, especially telling how the headless horseman lost his head. That's a brilliant fucking scene. Really well done. Worth a check out for sure. But yeah, um I'm gonna come back with another review and uh show you guys a couple things. Uh probably not like these won't release on the same day. This will be probably today. The other one will probably be tomorrow. But, um, yeah, you guys have a good day. Stay frosty. This is Trenchy signing off. Beep, up, boop. Okay, my bad. So, time for major unprofessionalism. I forgot to uh, rank the film. I forgot to give it a rating. Uh, I'm going to give it a 6. It's a solid film. Um, don't know if I'd watch it too often, but it, I, I definitely revisit it. And uh, I just found out this this was a made-for-TV movie. And it came out the same year as fucking the Tim Burton one. Holy fuck. Both came out in 1999. You can't go upstairs. No, you can't. You gotta chill. You gotta chill. Come here. Or don't. Okay. But yeah. Um, now we're really ending.